Hey guys, what's up? Shadowlands back from my Combat Arms commentary that I told you guys was coming out this weekend. Well, here I am doing it. And actually, I'm super excited about this one. I got some great gameplay for you guys, including a nice kick from an elite moderator. Man, it is great to be back in Combat Arms. Anyway, as I was saying, let's go ahead and dive right into this video. Today, I want to go over things that I've noticed that are different about the game, the same about the game, and kind of how I feel about Combat Arms as it is now, compared to what it was when I left. Now, keep in mind that the reason I left was because the community, honestly, I felt like was pretty negative and just in general not very supportive of people. And I feel like that has changed a little bit. It's gotten a little better, but it's still not great. It's not like when the game first came out prior to the 2012 hacking wave that came through when Nexon didn't really do any updating. <clears throat> Anyway, I think it's a lot better now, at least, than it was when I left, but not great. Like, honestly, compared to other games, it's still not great. Community is still kind of poor in that regard, but the game seems a lot less clan-oriented than it used to be, and I think that may be due to the server differences that there are now, and since they've done the merging. What I've noticed is that a lot of people that have, like, a big name in uh, one of the games, like, either in Europe or in no uh, North America aren't really recognized very much by people on the other end of the spectrum. So, like, people who are big in North America aren't registered by people or aren't recognized, I guess that's the right word, um, by people from EU and vice versa. So people who are, like, big-name YouTubers for e uh, EU, for the most part, don't really have quite as big of a deal over here. And, yeah, like I said, vice versa. That could be a good thing and a bad thing. Actually, I'm quite happy about it because I was hoping to have relatively little attention in-game coming back. I've only had a few people recognize me, and I feel like that's actually kind of a nice thing. It's nice to be able to log on and not have 500 million whispers a million inbox uh, messages that's really great and I'm actually really happy about that so it means I can actually sit back and enjoy the game and not take it as seriously as I used to that being said the clans are kind of under some pressure from that as well as from what I can at least tell from playing the game for about a week now is that it's kind of weird when you have clans that have the same name for example tears of fear any one of you guys who have looked it up recently has that at symbol in front of it and I realize that's to uh, make it so that you have two clans that have the same name moving over they don't overlap like that but honestly I kind of was hoping something like that wouldn't happen in Tears of Fear, but it did anyway. Anyway, moving on to more gameplay elements anyway. The game, I feel like, hasn't changed that much fundamentally. The only big thing that I feel like has changed gameplay at all is kind of the, I think density is the right word, density of uh, NX rare weapons and a lot of the higher tier weapons that you can get. I feel like in EU, they didn't hand those out quite as much like they did like candy basically in NA. So I feel like that wasn't quite as big of an incentive. So you go into games and it's very, very easy to tell apart who is an EU player and who is an NA player. Now, I realized that EU had its sales of its own anyway, and NA had other ones, so they didn't always overlap. In fact, they rarely did. I remember following both websites, and usually the sales never even lined up, even remotely, even in what they were selling. Even if they had a sale on the same day for both places, they wouldn't, like, overlap the same weapons. Like, one of us, like, we would be having epic sales, and they would maybe, if lucky, have a, uh, NX Rare sale or something like that. So, you could, it's pretty easy to tell apart EU players, not just from their tags and making it obvious that way, but from the, like, playstyle they have. That bringing up another point, I'm noticing that a lot of EU players kind of have the reverse psychology that we do. We kind of have that psychology where camping is a bad thing, and rushing is kind of a cool thing to do, that's what you're meant to do with the game, and they seem to have the opposite mindset. Whenever I run into an EU room, they kind of yell at me when I start uh, rushing, so like rushing is almost looked down upon, and camping is more of like the thing you want to do. I'm not saying that's a negative thing, it's just kind of how the game is perceived, and I guess that's different based on how you play, and where you play the game, so... I guess it's all up to a playstyle sort of thing and what's kind of the accepted norm. I haven't really gotten into it yet since I kind of do a mixture of both. If I use a long range sniper, yeah, I'm going to sit back and camp. But if I use like an L96A1, as you guys know, I love running around with my snipers. I'm going to use that for quick scoping. In fact, I have some quick scoping gameplay here for you guys. You're probably already in the middle of watching it, actually. But um, anyway, that's my point. It's just something that I've noticed about a big difference between the two of them. Kind of leading into that, I want to talk about the iron sights thing. I made a video on this quite a while ago, I think close to two years ago now where I said the iron sights really would never be a good, effective thing. And I kind of stand by that. I'm actually quite surprised they put it in the game at all. Even though it's sort of a standard FPS thing to have, I'm quite surprised that they put it in at all, and that it actually works as well as it does. That being said, I don't think the iron sights actually work that great in general. I feel like they're kind of hard to use, they're clunky, and they don't fit the same way that a scope does. At least, that's how I feel. I don't like the way they perform. I, I'm just not a big fan of it. Um, that being said, I feel like having new modifications for the weapon is a great way to go. I think having grips would be kind of cool, or at least ones that really did something. Uh, let's just leave it at that. But I like the new modification system. I think it's still got some quirks to it, but it's got a way to work itself out. And I'm looking forward to see what they do with that in the future. 
I'm also interested, actually, this came out something on the 19th, I believe, so just a few days ago. They claim they fixed the peaking bug. Now, I'm noticing some differences in a lot of places, especially on Oil Rig. If you guys are familiar with the one where there's the bridge that goes between the two bases, where you can basically go straight from one base to the other really, really quickly, there's a big peak spot that's in one of the bases where you can more or less just look over this tiny box and shoot down there. That got more or less fixed, and I'm actually quite happy about that. I actually have not had a chance, despite liking the map so much, to check out the one on Kill Creek with the two peak rocks that are in each of the spawns. I've not had uh, I've not had a chance to try those out yet, but I would like to see how those perform and see if it's easier to hit something, because when I first came back to the game, that patch had not been introduced yet, and so peaking was still kind of a thing on those rocks, and actually it was in my last gameplay a bit, I believe, as well. Um, where I kind of had that issue. I Don't quote me on that. I don't even remember what game I played on the last one, to be totally honest, but anyway, I've been back in the game for a while now. I'm really enjoying it. I think they've done a pretty good job of fixing up some nice little things around the edges. On the downside, so enough of the good news, a little bit of bad news that I'm kind of seeing is that the game, like, the player base is basically gone. Like, it has nothing compared to the player base it had years ago. Now, I realize what they're doing is that they're spreading out the servers more, and so there's more players playing on different servers, so it looks like on any one server, it, the population is super low. Although, altogether, it's not gigantic, it's nowhere near as big as it was before. Granted, it's still a fairly large player base compared to a lot of upcoming games, but this being, like, what, a 2007-2008 game, it's clearly got its own flaws, and we have quite a way to go, quite a ways to go before we actually see this happen. What do I think is going to happen to Combat Arms? Well, quite frankly, I think four years from now, this game will not exist. I'll say that quite frankly. I don't think this game will exist four years from now. If it does, it will be basically dead. Unless something just completely miraculous that no one would ever expect would happen, like a fucking RKO out of nowhere, nothing's going to happen to save this game. That's my honest opinion. Now, that being said, this time that I'm coming back around, I'm playing more for myself. I'm not running a clan. I'm not being as aggressive about YouTube just for this game. I'm playing very casually, and I'm actually really enjoying myself where I'm not feeling these obligations to do a lot of things, and quite frankly, I'm happy about it. I'm saying Frank a lot. Apparently, I have a friend named Frank that I haven't met yet, but anyway, um, the game overall, I'm pleased with for the time being. Just playing the raw gameplay mechanics, seeing a lot of skilled players, I'm seeing a lot of players. Hacking doesn't seem to be that much of an issue. I ran into one hacker over the course of the entire week, and it was very, very blatant hacks. It was aimbot. It was the classic use a knife to slash someone in the head and see everyone on the map die. It was very classic. Uh, like, throwback to, like, 2008, 2009. Actually, it kind of made me laugh. I wasn't even upset about it. I was actually laughing to myself. But I feel like they've done a very, very go uh, good job with their anti-cheat system. I feel like they've got a good thing going now. If you guys didn't know, they actually use a very similar anti-cheat system for their Ghost in the Shell game now as well. If you look at the anti-cheat system that boots up when the game does, you'll notice the two of them have basically the same identity. And if you look at the same uh, the directories for each of the game's installation paths, it's actually pretty much the same directory. So I'm pretty sure they're using a very, very similar archetype for their uh, hacking detection, which I think is great. Because it's working really, really well. I think what happened was they were designing the one for the uh, uh, Ghost in the Shell game, and they decided they would implement some of that stuff to Combat Arms, and it ended up working a lot better than they thought it was going to, so they kept it. That's what I think happened, anyway. It's a lot better than that really old Black Cypher uh, thing we had. I don't know if Black Cypher is still implemented, but that was a terrible uh, anti-cheat program. Honestly, the original Nexon one was better than that, and it was already crap. But that being said, as far as the game is concerned overall, I'm actually quite pleased with it. Um... Now, as a game that's kind of dying, would I recommend anyone new to get into this game? Not really. I would say go to uh, Ghost in the Shell First Assault. It's a very satisfying game that's in beta. It, currently, everything that you can pay for is entirely cosmetic, and it just performs really well as a game that's very similar to Combat Arms, but has the more modern touch to it, and I think it's being taken very good care of since Nexon is not the only company responsible for its production, unlike Combat Arms, and I think that's one of the things that's going to help keep it in line. Other companies aren't just going to let Nexon stomp all over it. That being said, Nexon is still the primary producer of it, so I think something's going to happen with the economy and having a bunch of different microtransactions, so we may see somewhat of a Combat Arms resemblance to it in the future. But for now, it's at least a really fun game to play, and anyone who plays during the beta is not going to have their stuff lost when it comes out into uh, full release. So you can look forward to that, at least, if you want to get a head start on the competition. So I think that's going to be a lot of fun. Other than that, there's not too much else to talk about Combat Arms at the moment. It's just a good game that I'm enjoying for the time being, and if you don't try to get into the competitive side of it, it can still be a lot of fun. I don't plan on playing Clan Wars actually really ever again. Uh, that was just an unrealistic amount of stress that I had put myself under, and I feel like a lot of people share my sentiment with that. So hopefully I'll never have to go through that kind of trauma again, but I'm looking forward to doing videos like this. I really enjoy doing these, and I will continue to make them. If you guys have ideas, definitely post them in the comment section below or on the Facebook group. I am looking forward to seeing you guys back in-game, and I will hopefully see you guys shortly in the future. Next out, I will be having a... Uh, 
uh, gameplay for Destiny, and then hopefully this coming week I will have out some stuff for Ghost in the Shell again, and maybe even a short Pokemon video over the uh, Pokemon Reborn game I've been playing, but more on that later. Thank you guys for watching. Shadowlands out.